Welcome back to the Ascended Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Crane. So I'm going to start this episode with challenging all of you to own your nose. As you can see, this episode is titled, No is a whole sentence. And I want to unpack that with you guys, because some of you guys are going to hear this and then start breaking out in hives. So we are on the journey of self. We are on the journey of truth, right? Because what is spirituality really at the, at the core of it all? It's the journey. It's the journey of truth. And part of that truth, 99.98% of that truth is self, right? We can sit here and be like, no, we're looking for the truth of the universe or the truth of God or, uh, you know, the truth of why all of this is what it is. But at the end of the day, you're part of that, baby. You're part of all of that which makes you the truth. We are on the journey of truth. And when you start to find those truths, you start to go through this process, you become uncomfortable, then you get sick of being uncomfortable. And then you're like, no, I'm going to get all of the things that I want in in my life because damn it, I want those things, right? And when you start to go after those things and you are in that process of manifesting the life that you want to have for yourself, right? What you realize is that you are going to have to start saying no a whole lot more in order to protect yourself, in order to preserve your interests, but in order to just stop doing things that you don't actually want to do. Because if you were to do it, you wouldn't actually be pursuing what we would call truth, right? And so I want to get you guys to a point where you can understand that no is a whole sentence. No. Practice with me. No. No, 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 I'm not gonna. No, I don't wanna. Ooh, that was a good one, right? Or just no. Hey, can you do this? No. Not no, because I don't think I'm gonna have time. Can you do this? No. Hey, you wanna go somewhere? No. But but why? Well, you know, I, I thought I was gonna go with you. I thought I was gonna have time. No, 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 no. No. Hey, do this thing. No. Why? Because I Because I don't want to. No. Well, why don't you want to? That's it. It stops there. The answer is no. You don't owe justifications for why the answer is no or why you don't do, you don't want to do something or why you don't want to go somewhere or why you don't want to fulfill the request to serve somebody else's self-interest, right? Because when people are asking you to do something for them, right, they're really just trying to get their own self-interest served. You don't have to be a part of that if you don't want to. No, 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 no. Damn it. Can I tell you guys about my journey of no? Ooh, child, I was a mess. So I want to I wanna take you back. I want to take you back to the ripe old age of 27. <laughs> the ripe old age. <laughs> I was 27 and I don't know. I just, some, I just hit a, I had a block, man. I hit a really big block. You know, I remember at that time I was like really struggling. I had lost my job. I didn't have any help. And so I was like really struggling trying to find ways to keep a roof over my head. Right. And, um, oh man. And this went on for like a year and I was so stressed. And prior to getting there, I was a people pleaser. I was a doormat. And I've always been, you know, fairly accomplished uh, for my age. Um, So when I was 26, I'm trying to think, right? So when I was 26, I actually, where I worked at the the time, I was director of finance and operations. And I just remember being there. And I won't get into specifics about the people, but I remember just feeling just, just really, really significantly mistreated. And I let them do it. And at the time, I was really upset about it and blame them for all of it. But I realize now in my own kind of journey that all of that, like personal power resides within self. People can't take it from you. If you feel like it's been taken, it's because you gave it away. And that, you know, that 
is hard because it has to sink in with people. And when you, when you process what I just said, it can hurt, right? And it can hurt because you didn't mean to, you never mean to give away your personal power. Well, anyway, I gave it away. And these people, they were not nice to me. It was, I remember I would cry every day, every day, every day. My God, every day at work, I cried. Every lunch, I cried. I'd go in my car and I would cry. I would go into the bathroom and I cried. These people were just so fucking mean to me. I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. I remember being director of finance and operations. I remember I had to get permission to buy post-it notes and shit like that. And I remember it being like such a demoralizing experience for me and like feeling so, I don't know, parts felt manipulated, parts felt taken advantage of. I just remember it being a really low point. And I think that particular experience felt really low because of it, it, it was a it was a, a marker in my life of when I got my power back right so prior to that experience I had always sort of kind of like struggled I was an, like even in my young adulthood I always had experiences of being bullied it's just that experience always really kind of stood out for me but when I keep going backwards I would get bullied and I remember being in law school getting bullied right I remember like all little boys, I said little boys, even though we were technically adults at the time, no one wanted to be in groups with me because they thought I didn't know the fucking answer to questions. And like, and that was always really mean. Now, mind you, I remember at this point in law school, I had already graduated from law school before. So I was like, I was actually back in law school for round two. And like, even the boys who hadn't had a law degree, who didn't know I already had one, who didn't care to get to know me at all, when it was like, when we had to break out into groups, nobody wanted to partner with me because they thought that I was like stupid because I went to law school in England, right? And so the people that I went to law school with, they were like Oxford grads and privilege and like white boys, right? And so here I am, a black girl, right? Public school educated, like no family, no parents and like no money, like, how could I possibly be sitting next to them? And they bullied me. And I, I, I take it back to when I was, like, in, like, undergrad in college being bullied by my roommate. And I take that back to when I was in high school being bullied by my teachers. And I take that back to when I was in middle school being bullied to the kids. And I can literally go all the way back. I remember being four years old in preschool, being bullied by the little kids in preschool. I remember at four hating recess because um, the kids would use that time to throw rocks at my, at my head, right? And I, I remember specifically, there was this one day it was in the winter. I remember as a kid loving the fact that I had to wear a bubble coat because when I would put on my bubble coat, my bubble coat was padding. And when I would get rocks thrown in my head, it wouldn't hurt as bad. I remember loving the fact that it was cold outside and I had to wear a coat because I was bullied, right? And so I, I have memories from four all the way up until 26 when I held that job of just being bullied continuously through. With that also being a people pleaser, being hurt because I felt like I could never properly please. Now I will say this, the people pleaser, a lot of, I mean, it's childhood trauma. I say this to you guys all the time. It's childhood trauma, the people pleasing thing, that's a mother trauma, right? always feeling like I looking feeling like I couldn't make that prod happy to save my life right and then so it just manifested into a person that was 26 who just you know was I would say was like weak in the mind not weak in terms of lack of resilience I think I've always been incredibly resilient but in terms of like weak with my voice not knowing how to stop things not knowing how to stand up for myself not knowing how to put a stop to something and it was always really weird because yeah, I mean, I, all of my education and training went into being an advocate for somebody else, right? Like, but I could never, ever, ever advocate for myself. Even as a kid, I would see other people get picked on and I would stand up for them, but never, ever, ever stood up for myself. And I don't know. So then I went into like this, tw this year of 26, lost that job and then had a whole year where I couldn't find another job and was just like broke, scared that I couldn't pay any of my bills out here in the world by myself and just like didn't know what I was going to do. Right. And then I remember the anxiety and the fear that I held about that of being so afraid that I was like going to end up sleeping out of my car that I remember looking at the ceiling one day going, you know what? Fuck it. I was like, I don't want to hold on to this anymore. 
And what I was holding was the anxiety of like not having any money and like not knowing if I could pay my bills. But I was also holding like this weight of my former self, this weight of being a people pleaser. Because part of that experience was I did everything I thought to keep other people happy. And I'm still here not knowing if I'm going to have a roof tomorrow. And I remember going, well, if I did all of that work and I don't even have my basic fucking needs met right now, then what the point, what was the point of doing all of that work? It got me nowhere. And I just looked up at the ceiling. I said, fuck it. Fuck all of this. Fuck this place. Fuck this car. <laughs> fuck these bills. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. Fuck you too. <laughs> I had a whole moment where all of that sort of emotional baggage that I was carrying, I just dropped it because it was too heavy to hold. I didn't want to hold it anymore. My heart was heavy and it really, really hurt. So I said, fuck it. And I let it all go. Funny enough, when I decided to let it go, my whole life shifted. Whole life changed. I'm talking within 30 days. My whole life changed. All of this abundance came in, all of this prosperity came in after a year of having nothing, after a year of being in a drought, my whole life switched. And when I understand now on an energetic level, I was experiencing that it was like this really kind of weird self-fulfilling prophecy. I had to let it go, right? But when I let it go, I, there was something that happened that I didn't anticipate energetically. Energetically, it, I, I started to purge. Sometimes when people purge, it comes out in emotions. Maybe it's tears or laughter. When I came, my purging was like in the form of like cursing people out. And by the time I realized that that was what was happening, it was it was way too late for me to even get a, a handle on it, right? I'll never forget like that deciding moment and like during this time in my life. I remember I, there was a family cookout because, you know, outside of COVID, my family, we do a lot of like cookouts, pool parties. And um, this one particular cookout, everybody was there. There was this guy that I didn't know who was in the fridge. Now, in my family cookouts, we're one of those like friends of the family. Anybody can come as long as you know somebody in the family, right? Your friend can come, your friend can come, your friend can come, even your friend of the friend can come as long as you know somebody in the family. And so with our family cookouts, they can get really big. Sometimes there'll be like 40, 50 people in the house. And the it's like a revolving door, right? People come, they come for an hour or two, they leave, and then somebody's friend Jesse, I don't know, comes, they pop over. Like our cookouts are a really good time. We're barbecuing, we're drinking, there's pools, there's laughter, there's music. It's a really good time, right? And anyway, so there's this guy, I don't know him, right? I just figured he was a friend of the family because it's typically how it works. He was in the kitchen. I said, so I said to him, hey, like, what's like, what's your name? And I don't actually remember his name anymore. But he told me his name. I said, Okay, great. Well, what's your your last name? Now for me, I'm asking you your full name, because I don't know you. And you're you're in my family's house. And we still I mean, duh, don't you want to keep an idea of like, <laughs> who's in your house? So I in my mind, this wasn't like a crazy question, right? Anyway, homeboy looks at me, he was like, What do you, you think you're the police? I'm not telling you and I kid you not. It was some poor guy. I think about it now and he didn't deserve this. <laughs> Somehow, some way, like all of the shit that I was carrying from a kid up until that point, it came out at one time and it came out in two words. I looked at him and with all sincerity, I looked at him in the eye and I said, fuck you. And I And look, you know what? The drink probably didn't help. And then I went around the cookout and I, and I was looking at people that had hurt my feelings in the past. And fortunately it was, it was nobody else's friend, right? It was all family. And I went around and I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> and everybody was looking at me like, oh my God, what happened? Now you have to understand from their perspective. They'd never seen me mad before. From my family's perspective, not only have they never seen me mad, they have never seen me come close to saying to any of them, fuck you or like whatever. Like that was a, a new thing, right? Like they were like, what? And then I remember one person trying to argue me back, which in my right state of mind now, I realized it's probably the appropriate thing to do because if somebody said did that to me, I would 100% have something to say about it, right? You're not going to just look at me, say fuck you, and then like walk off and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cool, right? Like I would have totally had something to say about it. But I don't know. They said something to me. And when I tell you I barked back like I had never barked before and I had a year 
It was a year cycle of barking. I barked at everybody. And what was happening, I was purging. Probably not in the most productive way, but it was such a necessary way. It was so much like, like, like pressed down residual sadness, anger, disappointment that I was holding that I was completely unaware that I was holding. And it was coming out at people that I was holding it against. It wasn't really coming out against newer people, except for that one poor guy at the cookout. I still don't know his name. Um, but the, the, the rest of it came out to people in my life that like, I felt like had wronged me or had mistreated me. And it was all coming out towards them. And then any newer people that got it, they were getting it on the spot. So like, let's say, um, I met someone and, um, I don't know, they said something to me that I didn't really appreciate. The moment it happened, because I was like already kind of on 10, I was like, and fuck you too. And people were like, whoa, what? And I had this year where I was like, I'm not doing that. Fuck that shit. That's crazy. And it was a whole year of like, blah, 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 blah. And it's so funny because now I'm so chill. Like I would have never, like prior to that, I would have never like considered myself to be chill. I was so high strung and worried and anxious all the time. Right. And like concerned about what people were thinking or how I made people felt and whatever. And then I kind of went through this moment where I let it all go. And like, there was this year where I wasn't taking like, no, you're not going to talk to me any kind of way. You're not going to treat me any kind of way. And I'm not taking it. I'm not doing what you want me to do. Cause you told me you wanted to do it. I'm not people pleasing you. Fuck that. And fuck you too, for even thinking that I would. And it was a whole year of like, Man, I was barking and I will never forget. I think it was my sister. And she said something like, do you think you really need, need to do that? And my sister was a huge person that I held resentment towards because there was many a years where I felt like she mistreated me. And, we're, you know, you know, we have a good relationship now. It's not necessarily something that I hold anymore. But, you know, look, it's, this is all part of the healing. Right. And um, like she, I, I remember saying to her, I said, look, when I go off into somebody, you know, the barrel is pointed in a direction. If you try to jump in front of the bullets, that's on you, but I'm not stopping. Because <laughs> I was like, I got a lot of shit to say. It was 26 years of just sadness that had never been expressed before. And it just needed to come out. It just needed to come out. And that was how I know learned how to say no. Funny enough, the year prior to that, was my year of no. So prior to going into my actual year where I was able to say it and probably said too much, right? I actually had a new year resolution. And my new year resolution was that I had wanted to stand up for myself more and that I had wanted to say no more. And I was like, this is my year of no. Went through the entire year, failed. Didn't stand up for myself, didn't say no. And it was almost like I had to do it again. I had to repeat the process. And when it repeated, it came out in like this visceral way, but it needed to come out and it was purging. But now I'm like so chill now that I'm on the other side of it. Like if you were to ask my sister, because my sister says it all the time, like what are some words that would describe her? She would always say like, oh, she's just so chill. Like she's calm, cool and collected, like nothing bothers her. And the reason why I'm so chill now is because I don't give a fuck, right? Like I know that if I wanted to end this today, we're ending it right now. And because of that, there, what is there for me to worry about? Why am I stressed? There's nothing for me to be stressed out over. Whereas prior to, I was always stressed because I was always trying to manage other people's expectations of me. Whereas now I don't really care what your expectations are. I said no, it is no, and that's what it is. And it's so interesting that when I look at how my life has panned out, right? And I even look at like my muggle job. A lot of my muggle job requires that I set boundaries for an entire organization. It requires that I'm saying no all the time. And there has been tons of situations where it would come through the grapevine that there was a colleague that didn't appreciate that I said no about something and then it gets back to me. And I always say to the person that tells that tells me, go back to so-and-so and tell so-and-so to come bring it to me directly. If they feel this way about it, tell them to bring it to me directly. I want to hear from the source. And you know what? So-and-so never comes to me directly. And what I realized in life is that that's like that. You got an issue with my no? Come tell me to my face. People won't tell you to your face. I don't know what that's about, but they just don't. People like to have issues with your nose in private. But if you have an issue with my no, come talk to me directly. I want to hear it from the source. And 
honestly, if you can't talk to me directly, I don't have time to be on, on the playground with you. Take it back to the playground and go hang out with your friends. I don't have time for that. And when I realized that I've gotten a lot farther in my notes saying, in my life saying no to people, no to this, no to that. No, I don't want to do this. No, I will not accept that from you. I will not tolerate that behavior. It's a no here. It's a no there. It's a no for me, Doug. Right. And so, you know, what I've learned in this journey is that no is a whole sentence. It's no. And then it's a period. Maybe it's a no. And then it's an exclamation point. Right. Shit. If I'm saying no and I'm not entirely sure what I'm saying no to, but I'm still kind of open. You may even get a no and an exclamation point with an asterisk next to it because the shit may change to a period depending on whether or not you're talking crazy. Right. And so no is a whole sentence. It just ends there. And so many of us, we justify our no's. I know we do because I used to be the person that would justify our no. When someone asks you to do something that you don't really want to do, you really want to say no. Right. How much anxiety do you get prior to saying no to something? How long do you talk to yourself? Like you have the conversation with yourself in your head about wanting to say no about something. You can be in the shower going, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say it like this. Maybe if I, if I, if I word it this way or I phrase it that way, maybe I won't offend them. Right. And so you say no, and then you start thinking about, um, the reasoning behind your no. By the time you take it back to that person, instead of just being no period, it's turning into, well, I thought about what you said. I don't think I can do it and I can't do it. And then you start lying, right? Because, oh, I'm so swamped or I have a meeting that day or, well, I got to work, even though you knew you were really off or, or you do the, <coughs> I'm sick, right? Like you start lying. And the craziest thing about that is that now you start being inauthentic. You've fallen off your journey of truth because now you're lying and you're not trying to lie. You're just trying to escape the discomfort of saying no to somebody, right? You're really trying to, to escape the discomfort of say, of setting this boundary of no. And you also don't want to disappoint people. But here's the thing. A no will always disappoint somebody. There's nothing that you can do about that. Nobody likes to be told no. I think it's our instinct, right? I don't even think it's societal. I think we're programmed that way. Look, I got a dog. Her name be Duchess. She don't like no. She hates to be told no. Even animals don't like no. I mean, she may do what I say, but she didn't like it. And she makes it very clear that she don't like it, right? I think it's an instinct. I think people in general don't like boundaries. Why would you want to be stopped, right? You ever try to go somewhere and then like police are like redirecting traffic telling you, you can know you can't drive that down that street. And like that period where you're annoyed, like, why can't I drive down that street, right? Or like, there's so many little things of like, no, that like happens in your day to day life that like frustrates you, right? So you're part of that. I think it's instinctual that people just don't like no, but it's not personal. Whenever I've been frustrated because I had to go on a detour and like go around the block because like a road was blocked off, I never was actually mad at the police officer that blocked the road off. I was just annoyed by what I consider to be an inconvenience for my own life and my self-serving interest. But that person had nothing to do with it. And I wasn't actually mad at that person. And when you're saying no to people, this is really what they're dealing with. They're annoyed at what they feel like is an inconvenience for themselves because for whatever reason, their own self self, their own self-interest wasn't satisfied at that moment, but it actually has nothing to do with you. They're not mad at you. And even if they were mad at you, you have to get comfortable with people being mad at you. We work so hard to avoid conflict that we don't even like the idea that someone may be mad at us. I had to get to a point where I realized, I don't care if you're mad at me. What the fuck does that have to do with me? That's none of my goddamn business. Be mad if you want to be mad. I said no. It was a no. It still is a no. And most likely, it'll be a no tomorrow. So it's best for you to just calm down. You making your blood pressure all high. Well, what reason? Hmm? What was the reason? What was the reason? There was none. There was no reason. And when you start saying no, you start getting farther, more, you, get, you start getting farther in life. I'm going to give you another example too in jobs, right? I see this all the time at work. The amount of times I've seen like somebody being ex extended an offer for a job and, and then that, that offer obviously has a salary in it, right? And that person goes, no, I want more money. I have yet to see a situation where that person didn't get more money. Even if it's like it's petty and it's like $500, they still walked away with more because they said no. 
it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to people you love. It's even okay to say no to opportunities because more opportunities will come. We're so afraid to use the word, but the word has so much power. There's so many, there's so much power in those two letters of just saying no. You just have to get comfortable with knowing that there's going to be periods of time in the beginning when you're exercising that where it's going to feel uncomfortable. And also being able to use no is very much like muscle memory. The more you use it, the easier easier is to say because you kind of graduate out of the, the the discomfort that comes with having to actually say the word no right you don't want to tell your kids no you don't want to tell your parents no that's a big thing you don't want to tell your friends no you don't want to tell maybe your boss no maybe your partner no you don't want to tell anybody no but here's the thing right so when you're not saying no you have all of these boundaries that are not being respected right? Can you work late? You're really tired. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you have to pick up your kid from school. Can you work late? You can't say no, right? Like maybe you had a friend that said something that hurt your feelings and maybe they do it all the time because you never corrected the behavior. And now you got a friend that you low-key resent because they're doing all these things that they actually thought was funny or the joke, but you never said no. Hey, stop. That's not okay with me. And they're continuing to do it. Now you have a friend that's low-key hurting you, but they love you and they don't actually want to hurt you, but you didn't tell them no. So they didn't know to stop. Right. And so you create these situations for yourself where you're living a life that's simply uncomfortable and you don't know how to to come out of that life. You start looking at yourself in the mirror like, how did I get here? How did I get here? How did I create this life? This is not what I had originally intended. And the reason for that is because you never said no. That's it. And stop justifying your no. You don't have to explain to anybody why you said no, you know? Now, if you want to clarify why you said a no, that's a different thing. Let's talk about the difference between justifying a no and clarifying a no, right? When we justify no's, typically what's happening is it's usually done in a, in a space of lying, right? And not lying because you're inherently a liar, but lying because you're trying to displace the, the, the discomfort, right? Sometimes people say, hey, you want to you wanna hang out on Saturday? And instead of just saying, hey, no, I don't, I don't really feel like it, right? You feel bad. And so now you're like, no, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I had plans. I'm sorry. I don't feel good. You know, oh, I'm sorry. My phone died. You know, you start coming up with things that are really essentially lies because you don't know how to just say no, right? And what you're doing is like justifying the reasoning for why you said no rather than clarifying. Clarifying the no will say no, hey hey, I thought I would be up for it, but turns out I just don't feel like it today. I'm just really not in the mood. And maybe you're tired. And also, honestly, I'm kind of tired. I would rather do that. Or maybe I just want a little bit of peace today and I want to watch Netflix. I thought I would be able to go out this weekend. So sorry that um, it was an inconvenience and I didn't clarify it earlier, but just not feeling it right now. So it's going to be no for me. That's a clarification of a no right? What a lot of people do is justify their no's. People prefer clarification of no's rather than justification. How many times have you had plans with somebody? They canceled last minute, gave you a bogus excuse. You put the phone down and you know, you knew it was a bogus excuse. Like you knew they was lying and you were like, well, why are they? Well, damn, like why didn't they, why didn't they just tell me? How many of you have thought you were going to have plans with somebody, they made up a crazy excuse for you and they and you thought to yourself, why didn't they just tell me? Versus if that person just came to you and said, hey, I thought I'd be up to it, just really not feeling it. It's not anything about you. I don't know. I'm just kind of in a mood today. I just don't want to do it. You'd be like, oh, all right. Oh man, damn, that sucks. But all right, I get it. I get it. And you would get it because you yourself have gone through plenty of situations in the past where you also experienced a mood and there were times where you agreed to do something and you didn't want to do it. And clarifying a no, people actually have a lot of respect for because everybody has been in a situation where they wanted to say no and they just didn't. Or they wanted to change their mind and they just didn't because they felt comfortable. And so when you clarify a no, people actually have a lot of respect for it because they understand where it is that you're coming from. Now, I will say this. You will have a harder time clarifying no's or just saying no in general to family members because family members have known you probably since you were a baby or you've known them since they were a baby. And so they have a lifetime of experience of having you serve out their self-interest in whichever way, shape, or form. Now, here's the thing. They probably don't even have an awareness that that's what they're doing, right? But they have a lifetime of experience of wanting you to do something on their behalf and then you doing it. And so the moment you're like, you know what? I want to pivot. 
I don't really want to have that kind of life for me anymore. People start going, well, what are you talking about? Well, oh my God, you change. Like, what are you, you're so disrespectful. That's a big one when you start saying no. People try to say that is disrespect. And you will get it a lot from your family. And here's the thing. The reason why people find it disrespectful is because society teaches people that saying no is disrespectful, right? You're taught from a young age that when you say no to your parents, that it's a sign of disrespect. And so if you come across adults that you try to say no to and they think you're being disrespectful, that is a product of their upbringing. It's not necessarily a representation of you actually actually being disrespectful. It's them misunderstanding the guidance and the lessons that they were given as a child. And honestly, that's on them. That's their shit to heal. It has nothing to do with you and you don't have to hold that. And you don't have to walk away feeling bad because that's how someone sees you or views you because you know you weren't being disrespectful. Be saying no is one of the highest forms of respect you can give to somebody because you're being honest with them. You're being authentic. You're not living, you're not living in your facade, you're sitting in your truth. And that's the most respectful way that you can present to somebody else. I'm saying no, because that is not, that's not of my truth. It's not in alignment of with my truth. The answer is no, because it is not in alignment with my truth today, right? No, it's a whole sentence. No. And when you start saying no, it's going to be hard for you. I want to give you all an exercise that I want you to take away. We're going to have it like no is a whole sentence, right? No is a whole sentence. And we're going to practice that in order for you to get into this space of being able to articulate no and say no, you have to practice it because it is muscle memory. It before you reach a point where you can say no to what you think are big things, you have to get used to saying no to what you think are small things first, right? And so the next time you're in a situation and let's say, I don't know, maybe you ordered a spray and you got a Coke. Some of you would just take the Coke. I used to be like that. Actually, I'm still kind of like that. I don't want anyone spitting in my Coke. Okay, you know what? Let's come up with a completely different <laughs> scenario because we're going we're gonna to go. Next time someone asks you something that's actually small, right? Like, um, I don't know, maybe you go to a friend's house, right? And maybe you have a friend that always offers you a, a drink when you get there, right? I'm that friend. If you come over, I'm always going to offer you something to drink. And then if you say no, I'll force it down your throat. Why? That's my own shit. That's my own things I'm healing. I feel inadequate as a host, right? And I feel like if you come over, I have to take care of you with food and beverages. And so if I try to give you something to eat or something to drink, and then like you won't accept it, then I feel bad because I feel like I'm inadequate as a host, but that's my shit. That's not your shit and you shouldn't hold my shit, right? Well, let's say you go to a friend's house and they offer you something to drink and you just don't want it. Just say no. Versus accepting the drink to be polite. How many times have you done something out of politeness when you didn't really want to do it? Not that it was a big deal, right? Not that it took a whole lot of energy to do right? You just didn't want to do it, but you did it anyway because you didn't want to make the other person uncomfortable or you didn't want to be uncomfortable. So you just did it, right? Things like that. Allow yourself to say no, not no, I'm so sorry. No, but just say no. And if you want to, you can clarify that no. No, I just had something to drink in the car. But like, make sure you're not lying, right? Because because if you didn't actually have something to drink in the car before you like walk to the door, that's a justification because you're lying, right? But if you did genuinely just drink something, that's a clarification. Just, hey, no, I just finished drinking something. Another clarification that's so simple, no, I'm actually not hungry right now. Or I'm sorry, I'm actually not thirsty right now. That's a clarification. That's okay. So practice saying no to little things. Next time you're hanging out with somebody and like you're trying to you're flipping through the TV trying to figure out what what you want to watch, right? Anybody ever like like I don't know, maybe it was a Netflix and chill, right? And like they're like, "Hey, you want to watch this on Netflix?" and you look at it and it doesn't really look that interesting. <laughs> But you're like, yeah, 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 it's fine. Whatever you want to watch. Maybe you can start by going, no, I don't, I don't want to watch that. Actually, that looks dreadful. I don't want to sit through an hour of that at all. <laughs> like start with saying no to small stuff, right? Be start by saying no to things that don't want, that doesn't make you want to break out in hives. And, and allow yourself to get into the habit and you'll notice that you'll be able to do it with increasing if it, uh, increased uh, sort of uh, frequency. And what that helps you with is also learning how to deal with the reactions of people that receive your no, 
right? Because that's part of the discomfort, not knowing how someone's going to receive the no and then not knowing what to do afterwards. Practice saying no with small things. Start saying no to yourself, right? Sometimes you make yourself do things that you don't want to do, right? I know there's been times where I've been like, you know what? I haven't vacuumed in a while. I should really start to vacuum this floor. I got fur balls everywhere because of the dog. I need to vacuum. I need to vacuum. I need to vacuum. And then I'll stress myself out because maybe I don't really feel like doing it. I've had to learn to say, no, I'm not vacuuming. Drop it. Like, Mr. Crane, drop it. I'm not vacuuming. Like, let this go, right? Maybe I should do laundry. Oh, I haven't done laundry in a while. No, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. I'm not doing it today. Mystic Rain, drop it. You're not doing laundry. I said no. It is what it is. Like sometimes your no starts with you too, right? Sometimes you can set boundaries with yourself and you can tell yourself no. And the more that you're doing it with yourself and you're doing it with small things and you're doing it repetitively, you start to kind of build that no muscle. And then you'll start to realize that when it comes to larger things, you just say no. And eventually what happens, you become that person who sticks who sticks on the no right I'm that person that if I say no no one comes back and they try to to argue the no now when I first started to say no people would argue the no and I think that's because they can sense that it wasn't firm when I first started saying no I was still battling with the discomfort of the no and the insecurity that I felt with saying no to people I think on an energetic level people could sense that they could sense that it wasn't a firm no and so they would try to see if they could flip it to a yes now if I say no People don't try again. They know oh, she's spoken. She said no. It is no. It is what it is. We're done with this conversation. And they know that, right? Eventually, you'll be the person where your no just resonates. You want to be in a space where your no bellows. And what I find is that people respect that. People respect that because they know your truth. They know you're not lying. They know at a minimum, even if they can't get you to do what they want you to do, they know at a minimum you told them the truth. At a minimum, you gave them the damn truth. And so much of people, so much of us, we go through this world and this lifetime and every person that we come across, we're getting the complete opposite of what is truth, right? Allow your no to bellow. Allow your no to resonate. Allow your no or allow yourself to sit in the silence of the the after effect of the no. Allow yourself to just say no and then stop talking. That's it. And allow yourself to grow comfortable in that silence that comes after that no. Instead of trying to fill it with a a justification with a lie, right? We'll try to fill the silence. We'll know. And then it's silent and we go, but, but, you know, I just, I thought I would could. And and then we start coming up with all these, these excuses and we start lying, you know, as a way to justify the no versus just saying no. And then holding the space. Hold the space of the no so the person you're interacting with can understand what that frequency feels like. Because you know what? You're probably teaching them too because that person also probably does not know what a real, true, authentic no feels like because people probably were never really truly honest with that person. Allow yourself to say no, N-O, period. You can put an exclamation point at the end of it if you're feeling passionate that day. Just say no. And allow it to stand on its own without you feeling the need to support it. Because a no is strong enough to support itself. Just no. No is a whole sentence. 